wondering if the remote learning packages, the paper packages were available and they are. So Alicia directed me to go to the LK Elementary Program blog and it is on the first page. And this screen is very similar, is the, familiar to us because this is where all of our learning uh, for teachers about Seesaw and Google, where all those are recorded. So click on that and that launches us to a website. So just looking across the tools here to find those paper um, offline learning resources under program support and then offline learning resource. And so I'm scrolling down. And so since this is the kindergarten group, we can click on that. So families have ordered these and they will end up being mailed to them. But as teachers, this is a good, and ECE partners, we're, it's great to see what's gone out. Might be able to snag an idea or two, I'm sure. There we go. So and Alicia, you, you anything more you want to share about that? Yeah, I just, um, I just do really want to keep in mind um, Jen and myself, as well as Jana, worked on these packages and we really, we did our best to try to maintain the integrity of, of the FDK program because we know that it is based a lot around socialization and it's based a lot on, you know, interactions and, and children being collaborative and learning through kind of the inquiry and the play. So we did our very best to try to keep some of those um, ideas in the back of our mind. However, it, it was a little bit more challenging than we had thought in some time. So if you are using some of these ideas, just remember that the opportunities you can provide your students with are endless when you're doing it remotely. And it doesn't have to be just a, here's a piece of paper, fill it out. Like we can give um, families ideas and really use that as a foundation, which I think is more valuable sometimes than just that piece of paper. So we did our best. We would love some feedback <laughs> for the upcoming packages. If anyone uh, has anything to share, please do not hesitate uh, to share those ideas as we move forward with all of this. Really great things to keep in mind because kindergarten is really about inquiry and play and um, developing themselves as little people. And so you're right on it having those little snippets sent home on a piece of paper is really not what the beauty happens in a kindergarten classroom, right? Where kids are interacting with each other, with the ECE and the teacher partnership and the environment that they're in. So yeah, it, it doesn't translate easily to paper, <laughs> for sure. It does not, not, not all of it, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, that was a great question to start us off. And so that's exactly what we wanted to have happen today is um, really our educators out there to really direct the learning and the thinking and be brave to uh, ask a question in the chat or even show your face too. We'd love to see people. <laughs> yeah. So I think that um, it is two o'clock, so we will get started. So thank you everyone for joining us for these office hours. We will be doing them weekly, just really as a platform for educators to kind of collaborate and share things that are working and uh, maybe troubleshoot and discuss some challenges. So we are so glad to have you here with us. It was super sunshiny this morning and now it is snowing, um, but it is still a wonderful Wednesday. It is a wonderful Wednesday. And we'll play our traditional territorial acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land on which we are gathered is part of the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Delaware nations. These indigenous nations, known as the Anishinaabek and Lenapau, agreed through their ancestral languages to the mutual sharing of the land with obligations and responsibilities to the environment. Today, these responsibilities and obligations extend to all peoples. Great, thanks, Pam. So, 
Uh, I am Alicia. I am one of the instructional coaches for the board. I have been working on the Google session. So for some of you, I might be a new face as I have not been with the Seesaw group too much. Um, but I have been working alongside Jen Gardner, who uh, will introduce herself shortly here with the FTK world. So um, I am so glad to be here and also to learn from Pam and from all of you guys and how you are using uh, Seesaw to better support and kind of how you're pushing out all that great content to your students during this time. So thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm working from home or staying at home too. Uh, my name is Pam Glant and a member of the elementary program team. And so Alicia and I didn't have an opportunity to work together in the last couple of weeks because she's been the, in the Google world. I've been supporting in the Seesaw world. We well, want to assure today is not going to be another repeat of a Seesaw session. Um, last week was really about the platforms that we were working on and so we want to get back to what's the learning that, and how it's that going and other logistical things that you might have challenges with um, or successes with uh, as you're dealing with your kindergarten learners. So thanks for welcoming me. Got my hair up in, a, in the pon Bitmoji ponytail. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> Hi Jen. Hi, I'm Jen Gardner. I'm an RECE at A Wright. Um, I've been with the board for about eight years now, and you probably saw me on those wonderful math <laughs> workshops that you had to watch during the strike days. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I know you get to have your little, uh, little radio TV show persona kind of get to follow you around. <laughs> Yeah. So we're welcoming guests today. Yeah. So really today it's about office hours, right? So Alicia, we were trying to figure out what does that kind of look like? Yeah, so we are trying to, again, as I mentioned, provide a platform for you guys as educators to kind of share things that have been uh, going well and also to kind of reach out and say, hey, I have this as an idea. Uh, has anyone had uh, success with this and just to kind of bounce ideas off of each other. So today what are, we are hoping is that we can share our experiences and we would love to hear from you. You guys are the ones that are in the trenches pushing out content. We are here to support you but we would love to hear from you. Uh, and then also please do not hesitate to put any questions in the chat and that way we can help to kind of go through those with you throughout our, our office hour today. Right. So the three of us that are controlling the screen today may not have the answers for you, but the answers probably in the room or that, you know, the digital world out there. And I think it's okay for us to say, um, we don't know, <laughs> right? Because we are trying to figure this all out too. Um, I was saying in the Seesaw sessions last week that I was about eight hours ahead of people in find, learning things. So, you know, I'd be wrapping up the presentation, getting it prepped around 11 at night, and then like, whoo, there we go, nine o'clock the next morning, <laughs> um, feeling like I've got a little bit of information. So I think it's okay for us to say we don't have the answers just yet. And they're office hours, so maybe it's just like chat time and, you know, say what's good going on. Yeah, it's a good way, good way to give you guys a bit of a, a breathing space as well, just to kind of talk and feel connected. And I think we've discovered some skill sets. So Jen obviously has been great about sharing math learning already. Um, I have discovered I do not have the skill of managing the chat well. So thankfully I have good partners that are gonna take that on. We will do our best. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think what Jen and Alicia and I have been doing is also a lot of listening and um, Jen, you've been, you said something about you have belonged to some Facebook groups. Yes. Garden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that I see coming up more and more is um, the direction from ETFO to be careful making videos. And um, I just was, I'm sure everyone is wondering, is that something that we're doing for LKDSB? Right. So I hear like, that's a great question. So I think about when we think about our questions, we got them within our own board, but it's also it's interesting to see what's happening across the province. And so the video and the reading books and all that kind of thing was a question that came my way um, earlier in the week. So we did some wondering about that. And 
one, our publishers have come out and said like they're much more open about um, having their books read and recorded. They're just asking that, you know, we reference it, say, say the name, the author, and talk about the publisher a little bit, you know, front of the book. Uh, we take that, that helps out a lot. Um, but also if we're recording things, maybe like we delete them by June 30th. So some guidelines like that. But then there was a question through the EPFO that, you know, as an EPFO member too, like you're not EPFO, right? You're QB, but EPFO has come out with some guidelines about recording teachers and that sort of thing. So, you know, those are, it's always good for us to be cautious and to um, think about student privacy and, as we go forward, but also think about our own professionalism as we move forward. So I'm thinking, what, where have we recorded these stories? So I re, I've recorded them and I put them on my device and then I've uploaded them into Seesaw. And Seesaw is within the LKDSB domain and it's being used with a small population, like the 30 families that you connect with in the kindergarten classroom. And that's a pretty tight circle. So I, I feel pretty confident that we're making good practice to protect students and we're protecting ourselves. In contrast, I'm not taking that video, putting it up on, on you know, uh, YouTube and, and people could Google Pam Gallant Read Stories and find me that way. That's a totally different platform. So I think us living in the seesaw world, I think we're, we're, we're doing, I think we're in a good place there. Awesome, thanks. I do uh, agree, Pam, completely with you. I know that um, from my own experiences, just with my own kiddos kind of at home, um, their teachers have been, you know, trying out some new things. And I have heard from other FDK, you know, early primary teachers that um, they are using Seesaw kind of to, to read to their students. And I will say, like, my kids love my oldest, who is in grade five, who is not in the yeah. FDK world, but he loves to hear his teacher read to him. And it's just mm -hmm. a really great way. So I would really encourage um, teachers to, you know, find ways that they are comfortable with. And Pam, as you said, doing it within Seesaw rather than say YouTube or something like that. I mm -hmm. feel like we are very uh, much supported with our board and through this purchasing of the Seesaw licenses that I, I think that that's something that we can feel comfortable with doing. Absolutely. And with Seesaw being the LKDSB, Seesaw for Schools, um, that gives that extra layer of support for um, promoting student safety as privacy goes, but also for our own professional um, reasons. It's helping us keep in a protected domain. We're not like out on our own for that. And I think just that comment, that question that Jen posed earlier, like when we were chatting with this this morning, like it kind of comes back to these four points that have kind of bubbled up to be what teachers are wondering about, like the parent check-in piece, pace, how long are students taking to complete the work, um, what's new learning versus reinforcement, and lowering expectations and slowing down. Like I just think like reading kids a story is one of the, probably their most favorite things of the day. Um, so it's okay for us to slow down and maybe share that story over a couple of days. Like, you know, getting kids to sit for 15 minutes might be a lot, but maybe they'll, if we break that story into three, five minute sections, that helps us slow down the content, the pace that a family can have it. And they come back to hear the middle of the story and then the end of the story to go with that. Yeah. And there's lots of kind of great conversations going on in the chat. Brandy Boston saying that they've recorded two books last week. She read one and then her ECE read one. And the feedback coming from parents is really great. The kids are loving it. And Annette saying that the connections um, made are so invaluable. And I just think that if, if we are doing our best to maintain that privacy, um, the kids are really appreciating it. And they also, I think the families are probably appreciating that we're putting in the efforts to try to connect with the kids as well. Now there is a question here, um, seesaw videos can be up to five minutes, is that? Yes, so that, that is true. So within yep. Seesaw, you can record it right in Seesaw. Um, I did it both ways. I did, um, what, just as a practice, I did one where I did the intro to the book um, I was thinking from the junior lens, so I did the video there and just kind of introduced the book called Three Questions, kind of got 
like the before reading activity did there. But then when I actually read the story, I went because I wanted to have the pictures of the book showing rather than me. So then I used actually my little step ladder and a pile of books and made myself comfy, <laughs> got everything all organized so we could read the story that way. And I did that in the video and added it as an attachment. So within Seesaw, I think families were able, it was familiar to them to see an embedded video, but also to use the link function. Okay, something. So I'm going to throw something out there because there, this whole chat, Pam, I know you're not following, but yeah. hi. I'm gonna maybe see if we can get some people to chat because Sabrina is saying that she ups, uploads the entire video uh, from a Google Doc and made it into a link then she can share it, allowing her to read the whole story. Would anyone be willing to kind of hop on and share their experience? There's um, also some conversation happening with about clips and how it's great to upload those longer stories. So mm -hmm. I would really love if anyone would be willing to unmute yourselves and join in the conversation. Hi. Just, go ahead. <laughs> Brina, um, I was able to navigate through uh, the Google Documents, um, just kind of fiddling around with that, and was able to find uh, user-friendly for my parents to create a uh, link that I would put right into a day plan for, for the students, and then they can just click on the link in, in, in my, um, my, when I put it into Seesaw, I give a little um, blurb as to what it is. So they had like an introduction that's written that way. And um, it seems to be working fairly well. Um, it was just a little bit of navigating through Google beforehand to be able to make it more user friendly for the families. Absolutely. I think that's great. So yeah, it's been working good for us so far. <laughs> Absolutely. And Sabrina, I found out a little more about your um, Samsung or Android question. So Seesaw okay. is your question, your it's there was a question about using links in uh, Android devices, and Seesaw is working on that fi fix. So, oh, perfect. It wasn't uh, you; it was them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Okay. That that's. Yeah. Uh, I did use your, um, you know, sidetrack there to be able to to hop over that problem. So it is accessible for everybody. But yeah, that would be nice. Excellent. Um, like we talked before. So thank you. And I love how like we're really repeating what's learning going on for kids is it, like it's familiar to them and the new learning is just the platform piece, but we're really reinforcing what learning they've been accustomed to. And it's probably helping out with their well-being to know that their teacher reads some stories, right? And they love that. Was there somebody else that wanted to say something after Sabrina? I just wanted to add, um, I'm not sure if you guys all know, going back to the meeting aspect and using Google Meet, mm -hmm. we have the ability to record our meetings as well. I didn't know if everybody was aware of that. So if you're logged in through your .com account, you should be able to record your meeting as well if you're worried about anything, you know, that way privacy wise and whatnot. So you have a hard copy and it, uh, it informs everybody that the meeting's being recorded and it will save a copy to the hosts, um, hard drive. Awesome. Um, just to follow up on that about like we're talking kindergarten kids, right? So they're probably not the ones doing this. But um, I think if you're using older grades with Google Me, if you share the room code ahead of time when the rooms open, they may get there before you. So we don't really know what's going on before the teacher shows up. <laughs> so you might want to think about your window of when you open up the window, the class, the, the Google Meet. Um, so like if you open it up in the day before, the kids may be in there before you arrive on the Thursday. So just those little tips to help us um, manage that. But having people know that it's being recorded is helpful. It's like driving the bus to school. Um, Sarah, I saw that you had a question. Is Clips an app? And yes, so Apple Clips is an app um, that you also can use. So that's uh, a really, I think a really easy app to use once you get it figured out. Um, that you could also share the link or upload onto your Seesaw to read a longer story rather than just being um, within those five minutes that Seesaw allows you. Yeah. You would, as a user, probably know the clips. Like anything we've done for the math games um, have all been done on clips. Yeah. 
I'm just uh, these points that we have here, ones that came to our attention, and like the parent check in piece, like people knowing that their families are enjoying the story time, that's a way we know, uh, that's a way of checking in, right? To see who's been reading the stories and any feedbacks or comments or responses we get about the um, story. That's one way of checking in. Um, is there other ways people are doing a parent check in, like how we find out about that? Yeah, I think often we can we can get really valuable information from parents because they are the ones right now that are are trying to navigate and kind of step into our shoes as best possible. So um, as a parent of two older kiddos, we have it's been a learning curve for us. So um, just wondering if anyone has has been able to connect with their families to gain information and maybe if that's, you know, changed the way that you are pushing out uh, learning or if anything is, has come to your attention through interacting with parents? Um, we just really wanted to make sure that parents knew that there was no pressure, um, go at your own pace, um, do what activities that you can handle. And um, we did one learning piece this week um, because subitizing is kind of my jam. And we just felt we do that a lot at, at school and it's something that the kids are used to. So um, I was able to make a little um, document just explaining what subitizing is. I tried to keep it fairly simple and um, just to encourage the parents to keep playing with their kids. So instead of um, a whole new skill for the children, it was more of a new skill for the parents but with a simple explanation. That's a great um, suggestion. And that might be like a good way of introducing a clips video too, right? Because we have yeah. this on the, the blog. So again, showing that your own voice, so explaining what it is, is helpful too. It's familiar for parents. And then the kids are like, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things coming up in the chat. Uh, Annette is saying, my struggle is to comment on activities that are obviously not done by the student. <laughs> I, you know, we all feel your pain. Um, yeah. Now, I was really appreciative this week. Um, I did a task at home with my grade two, mm -hmm. um, and he had some struggles with it. And in the feedback, the teacher actually posed a question that although my son could have answered, it allowed me to kind of give a little bit of feedback. So it was about um, putting some words in alphabetical order, for example. And I said, you know, we had a lot of conversation and there were three, le three words that started with the letter A. And there was a lot of like alphabet singing and, and talking about how you go to the next letter. So even reaching out to the parents uh, in those, those comments and just saying, you know, how did it go? Was there a spot that, you know, we needed extra support and just kind of gauging how much parents are supporting because you're absolutely right. Chances are, especially in the kindergarten world, there's not a whole lot of independence happening <laughs> during this time and, and that's okay. Exactly. Um, we, it's interesting as I'm thinking about this cluster of people, the, the kindergarten teachers, and tomorrow I'm going to be joining like junior teachers. And I'm thinking about the check-in piece. We're in the kindergarten group, probably because Seesaw has been the platform that teachers have been using since the start. I was making the, I'm making the assumption that like making contact wasn't our struggle. It's more about like, how do we go from documenting in the classroom using Seesaw to now giving learning opportunities through Seesaw. And the check-in is about pace of work, volume of work, who's doing the work. Like that's, I'm, I'm, am I making that assumption, am I correct in my assumption that it's more about the work that you're checking in on parents or did you actually hear, are we actually connected in the check-in? I think in the junior group, their struggle will be, are my kids even connected? Like after 10 days, like, or have we made a contact? I feel that like we had most of our families connected already, mm -hmm. but reaching out to them again afterwards, I don't know like what everybody else's success has been like, but I, I think that we've kind of been struggling. Like we have the same like 
handful of kids that are there every day and completing the activities. And then we've had parents that like, no matter how many times we're reaching out to them and responding, they, they're not responding to us, but it's not that they're not connected to Seesaw because we've used it to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. They're just not responding like to any of it. It's, yes. And it's a little bit like frustrating, but under, I don't know if they're just dealing with older siblings or whatnot. So, yeah. And has all your communication gone through Seesaw or like, have you made phone calls or? Uh, oh, we've made phone calls and we yeah. so, okay. like, they're answering their phone, but they're still not coming back to the Seesaw mm -hmm. platform. Like they're, the children aren't um, completing activities and whatnot. It, I don't know if it's just not like a priority for their families at this time or, and we've even had some families say that, like we have a family that is a nurse and a police officer and they're like, we just don't have time right now. And we're going to do our own thing. So it's, it's just an adjustment, I guess, keep reaching out. and Yeah. And um, when we were talking ahead of time too, we were thinking about that statement, lower expectations and slow down. We can lower expectations for our students, but maybe we almost have to lower expectations for ourselves too, right? Because, you know, you go from every day I'm connected with my families, they, they know what's going on in my classroom. And now like, what? Some of them don't know, like I'm missing some of them. Like we have to, everybody's figuring out what this new distance learning looks like, right? So thank you for sharing that because I'm like, you're probably worried about those little ones, right? About, you know, what's going on with them. <laughs> and I think too, it's, um, so there's lots kind of going on in the chat and I feel like a lot of people are, are feeling the same way. So, um, you know, as mentioned, there's a couple of you who have mentioned in here that some of the parents are, you know, they're knee deep in all of this going on, whether they're first responders or whether they're working in hospitals. Um, and we need to really be cognizant of that. And we need to think about schooling for a lot of these families probably is not priority right now. And it's probably we're all in different situations and all we can do is kind of reach out and let them know that we're there and they're gonna do what they can do with what they have right now. And I think by all of you being the amazing educators that, that you are, um, I think just trying to keep that connection and reaching those kids that you can during this, this difficult time is really all we can do. I think you guys are doing an amazing job and although it's probably hard and you are really, really worried about those beautiful little kiddos at home, I think that what you're doing is is all we can do. Exactly. But we will pass that on to um, Ben Hazard, our superintendent, like that there is worry and struggle about checking in with families. Uh, well, and Ben actually just joined our chat. So he will be, if anyone has anything to say, now is your, <laughs> you know, now is your time because it is legit. We, we care about our kids and we want to see them doing um, as best we can during this time. So please keep those conversations going right um, Cheryl is asking do you know if the intermediate teachers are also being told the same message about parents students just doing what they can and not marking the work for final grades I don't know so we are learning about the assessment piece so there was a memo that went out um, about that and um, so I would recommend people go to the, or, um, the portal and find those memos are all posted there. Because when we talk about it, everybody, you know, it's my interpretation, but like to go through there. But the report card, hi Ben, how are you? Hey. So maybe you can address that too, is that um, ground us in our assessment piece. So uh, about the intermediate, I think that what we're doing is that we are, uh, we've said after May 4th, uh, and as we know, uh, we know from announcement from the premier yesterday that school closures will extend. We don't know how long that is. So we're waiting for more information. Uh, but we said that we would provide more at that time for everyone from kindergarten through all of our divisions. Um, and so this uh, slide here with about the pace and about new learning and reinforcement and about assessment, that's going to be a consistent message across our panels uh, from, uh, from kindergarten right through to grade eight. Uh, but you know what, I think right now uh, we appreciate all of everyone's efforts and uh, we want to provide grace for everyone as we figure this out and work together as we figure out what's the best thing. Uh, I saw people saying that, um, uh, that um, you know, if you had 50% of their uh, class was connected, that's great. 
it really mm -hmm. is great news. So just uh, we appreciate it, all the efforts that are happening. Uh, the truth is, is that the, the marks will be based on March 13th if this continues to extend. And that uh, marks can only go up, they cannot go down. And that, uh, that the kind of things that we, so if somebody put good effort in, that could raise a mark, but it could not decrease a mark. And that we would, uh, and so we are uh, suggesting that we have to take, take care as we go through that process, Pam. But uh, thank, I thank everybody. This is just uh, great to see everyone working together and figuring it out. I think that's what we do best on Lampton Kent, and it's uh, great to see everybody together today. Thank you for the clarity. I like that. <laughs> I did want to share this in the chat in case people um, are not following along, but Melissa Hewitt just shared a fantastic idea and everyone is kind of agreeing. She said, today I went through my camera roll and posted a picture to each individual child in their journal. I would say the child's name, look what I found. Do you remember what you were doing? Tell your family. I am hoping this is a fun way to check in with a family in a no pressure way. And I think that's so fun. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I sometimes get, what'd you do at school today? Nothing. What'd you learn? <laughs> Nothing. So seeing that kind of video evidence or, or photo evidence is nice to kind of get that conversation going too. That's a great, great idea. I just, uh, Alicia, I just found some pictures on my iPad from September of all the kids. So I have each of them from about the first day of school or the first week of school. So I was thinking maybe if I post that to each individual journal, that might get them uh, some more engagement, hopefully. Absolutely. For sure. And like the beauty of the kindergarten program rests in these four frames. And just thinking about your idea of like, this is what you look like in September, like getting them to think about that from a literacy lens, like what have you, what's changed or like math behavior, have you grown? Like any kind of question there. And um, I love like that whole idea, like sharing it with a family member, like builds that capacity to belong, right? And make those connections. So just those little nuggets, little nudges, you're still within the, expectations of the kindergarten community uh, curriculum, but you're really helping bridging that gap between distance learning and school learning. Beautiful idea. So Stephanie Russell is just saying um, about how they are using Google Meets three times a week. I mm -hmm. would love to hear a little bit more about this if you are willing to to pop on and share um, because I actually talked to one of my friends who uh, does some prep work for FTK students and was, I'm so interested on how Google Meets looks with, a, with the littles. If you would be willing to share, that would be great. Uh, hi, Alicia. I think my sound and video was on. You sound great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My teaching partner, Cassie Camerlingus, we go on Tuesdays at 10, Thursdays at 2, and Fridays at noon. And uh, we have a live chat. We have had up to eight children sign in, different children each time. And uh, they seem to enjoy it. They were excited to share Easter, you know, what they wanted to do for Easter weekend, what they were looking forward to. Um, we also send out activities and challenges on Seesaw every morning at 9 o'clock as well, so they can do those even if they don't see us on uh, Google Meets, but it just gives us a chance to see them face to face and them to hear our voices and us to hear theirs and and you know share what's going on. I love that. That's amazing. I see um, you're happy with your eight rather than thirty yeah. at your Google Meet. <laughs> <laughs> we we would love to see everybody, but we realize that's just not possible. Some people are still waiting for uh, devices. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of the parents are uh, essential workers, they're not home, maybe grandparents don't know how to, you know, get into these uh, apps. We have had, you know, a little bit of frustration from parents who can't get the sound working or whatever, and we send them, you know, troubleshooting links and stuff, and they're doing our best, but we enjoy it, and we're going to keep doing it, so. Beautiful. Kelly McLaughlin, I'm going to call you out for a minute. <laughs> Would you be willing to share? Kelly says that she's meeting with her SKs for guided reading groups. Um, and then her JKs are doing some songs and stories. Yes, it's going really well. It was nice to meet with the smaller group. I have 30 kindergartens, so I did do a couple where whoever wanted to come could show up and it was a bit crazy. <laughs> 
So meeting with like their little guided reading groups was nice. I sent all the books to the parents on Seesaw. So then a lot of them had printed them and yeah, we just met with our small groups and it went really well. That's amazing. JK's was more relaxed. It was, we practiced songs we already knew and then I read them a story and chatted. Fun. <laughs> I see someone else actually was saying that they um, had a crazy hat day and bring your stuffy to the meet day. So again, going back to, you know, the whole program and the four frames of the kindergarten program, that's a perfect way to really, you know, get kids feeling that sense of belonging and, and, you know, just contributing to, to what they really are. So that's, that's a great idea as well. And that problem solving innovating one, I um, was just thinking about Samantha's, um, what she did with her family, they got into the recycling bin and pulled out, you know, sorted things. And so there were some math activities going on, but then they got into like, let's make something and do that. And I think that might be interesting to even to share that, like through your own video, dump your own recycling bin mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, what can you do with that? And just invoke that, that would be fun to share back at a, a Google Meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I see um, that Diana is asking, how do you initiate Google Meet? There uh, is actually a session that is posted, um, again, through that elementary resource page that we shared with you earlier, um, that does have a Google Meet session that kind of walks through how you can get it set up. So that might be helpful to go back to Oh, Pam is going to show us. Thanks, Pam. Yeah, so we're back at that page. So if we look at the tools, there's a Google Meet, um, just like we did for the Seesaw and the Google Suite pieces. So there's a video there, how to use it, how to archive it, some instructions. Great archive pieces there. Yes. And I think, you know, it does take a little bit to get the students on and to get everybody comfortable, but just be patient. And I know people have said here, um, it's easy and it's totally worth it. So just, you know, mm -hmm. keep in mind that pace and for some uh, parents or grandparents and obviously students that this is new, but if you put the time into it and the, the students will really appreciate it. So the educator there that shared that they had Google Meet sessions, did, how did they communicate that? Was that done? Like I was thinking I might put that as a link, like as an announcement or something in my Seesaw class to say these are my Google Meet times and have the link put in there. But I was wondering if she had done it a different way. I, you, huh? myself, to, for our Google Meets, I first created um, like a video showing parents how to access the app through the both the computer and a tablet mm -hmm. and then um i sent out a message like the night before like tomorrow at one we'll be having our google meet and i'll post the meeting link 10 minutes before as an announcement and they just click on it and it'll take them right to the meeting perfect yeah, and Brandy um, Boston was actually saying that she did the same thing. So she sent the link out about 10 minutes before the meeting and did that through CSAUS. I'm assuming, um, Brandy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming you probably did that as an announcement for the families. She says yes. Okay. <laughs> I did so want to pop in here and just talk about activities for a moment because I see there's a lot more action going on with activities. And so we have our bank of activities and sort of thing. But to connect back with that pace piece, um, so when you're listening to families and saying, you know, I like that you know, I find out what happened, do I want to know everything for the whole week or are you pacing it every day? What you can do is um, when you are into these activities, once you've shared one or creating one, click on the three little dots here. And if you already know this, give yourself a pat in the back. Um, but you can edit the activity, go scrolling down here to the bottom and get to the more options piece. You can assign that immediately or you can say, I want that to go out 
later. So if you're a planner and say, I'm going to do like three literacy activities for this week, and I want one to go out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can change the date that things come out on and set your time because someone just mentioned like they send things out at nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know about your household. I live alone and like sometimes getting things done right at the top of the hour doesn't happen. So I can only imagine <laughs> when there are, you know, other people involved, but you can then set the pace, like, so you could pace it out for the family to receive it, but also you can pace it out for your own professional, um, purpose, right? So you're deciding, I've got these all pulled together, I'm going to work on them, and I want to um, have a path to travel upon. Pam, that's great. I didn't know that that was a thing. And mm -hmm. actually, um, so Heather and Jen and Karen and I had been talking a little bit. Um, Heather, I don't know if I'm going to put you on the spot, or if you're willing to share. Um, but you had another um, kind of way of of getting your assignments uploaded first and then pushing it out at a different time. Did you want to speak to that for a minute or? Sure. Yeah. Um, so Jen Gardner and I are partners. And um, so we were finding that it's nice to be able to post an activity ahead of time um, mm -hmm. just so we can kind of get ahead of our schedule and stay on track. And, but um, when you're just posting to the journal and now this is in the Seesaw family app, um, we have a lot of parents who have just gotten on. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't like that whole pacing it and taking it slow. We didn't want to overwhelm them with switching over to Google, um, like the class app just mm -hmm. yet. So we were still using, or we still are using family. And so there wasn't a way to schedule into the journal that I have been able to find, but okay. you can post it and not assign any kids to it. And then that way it's up there and you've got it there. It's done. So you can upload your video or your, you know, yeah. note or whatever it is you have for the parents. And then when you're ready, um, you can add those kids in. So you can go down to the three dots that are at the bottom right of that post, click the three dots, and then it'll say edit. Um, I think it's people edit folders, edit time or date or something like that. And, um, that way, then you can just add those kids in when you're ready, and then they'll see it. And then I also just discovered that you can actually um, change the date. So if I post something onto that journal, you know, let's say I did it on Monday, but I didn't want it to show up until Wednesday, you can actually go and change the date on it so that it then um, goes up to the top of your journal and then the parents are seeing it on the that day that you want them to see it. So it can just kind of sit there in a hold pattern and then when you're ready you can add those kids in and then you can add you can change the date so that the date shows just if you're going back and you're you know you're looking at okay what did I do on this date it's actually going to show that activity or that video or whatever you've posted on that actual date that you wanted there. So hopefully that makes sense. I wrote some instructions out and sent it to Alicia. So if anybody needs it in writing, she's got that. Um, but that's sort of the workaround that we have found while using the Seesaw families. Um, something interesting we found though is that some of the parents have been able to get in through the Seesaw class app. Um, so if they had an older sibling, it seems as though they must be trying to log back in through the class app, which is great. And there's just um, a six letter code that you give to the parents and um, it expires after an hour. But if you give them that code, they can then log back into their child's journal and they can um, upload videos and pictures and things right into their journal. So kind of neat. So we're just, like I said, we're taking it slow. I think for Jen and I, we're taking it slow for ourselves as we learn a little bit more about Seesaw. Um, but just, we didn't want to overwhelm all of our parents. We do have some who, um, you know, don't have internet access right now. They're just getting devices. They've just gotten onto Seesaw very recently. Um, so we're just trying to take it slow with them as well. And then hopefully, you know, maybe as we progress through in the next month or so, we'll maybe get some more people um, with that class app and we can kind of migrate everybody over to that so that we can do those, those scheduled posts. But sorry, 
I'm talking a lot, but that's how we, that's how we went around. We got around that whole idea of you can't schedule anything into the journal, but actually if you want to, you kind of can. So yeah. that was my, that was my workaround and Jen and I kind of figured that out together. That's awesome. Like it helped me a lot to process. I often use the sample student. Yes. Things into, so they, they're not real, right? They're, yeah. And that's exactly, yeah, we actually yeah. have a sample student and that's what we've been doing. And I also have a sample class. So I will just pop on that sample class. I'll post something to that. Jen and I can still see it. We can kind of test it out. Do we like it? Or even, you know, you can even do it in your, in your class under sample student. But just sometimes if I'm afraid I might accidentally, <laughs> you know, tag somebody or tag a child and I didn't mean to, if I do it in my sample class, then I don't have to worry about that. And I'm just doing it in that sample student journal. And what I've learned about CISA, other than like tagging people that you don't want to tag, like really, we can't break it. <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very user friendly. You can always go back, you can edit, you can delete things, you can take kids out. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Favorite buttons right there, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm just exactly. looking, listening to you talk about your activities. So I put mine in a sample student. I could edit what it looks like, who yeah. gets it, what folder it's in. Yeah. And there's the edit date right there. So awesome. Yeah. That's great. Okay, we'll go back. And all of these helpful people in our chat. Um, so there is an icon shortcut, a Google Doc. I'm assuming, Sancho, you want to speak to that that you just shared there with us for creating yeah. your activities? Yeah, so it is just, I'll see if I can pull it up here. When you, it just allows you to, put the sorry i'm trying to do two things at once <laughs> that's okay um, it, allows, <laughs> it allows you to put up the when you're creating the activities if you do these words instead it'll actually put the icon of the camera and that just for if you have children that are doing it on their own that they, they know what you're asking them and whatnot just you sit in on the uh, seesaw sessions like the Group number three? It could be, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. so there were in the uh, part, the that's the beginner group um, or new to C part, Seesaw part. If you were a frequent use Seesaw user, they talked about some of those codes in there. So thank you um, for sharing that little, there is something out there, but if you're ready to, ready to listen, and um, to learn more about creating your activities using those codes, that's where you can find some LKDSB um, info ready for you. And we really appreciate you sharing that uh, document with us as well. That's, uh, that's very helpful. So thank you for that. Um, so just a couple more ideas, sorry, because this I think this is adorable, but um, one of the teachers has sent their students thinking of you cards and seeds to plant through the mail, which I think is adorable. And she said they were just flower seeds, but she labeled them as seeds of hope, which is such a great idea. And probably, can you imagine when those littles get that through the mail, how excited they would be? That's pretty awesome. Mm There was also another, um, I am sending out a book of the week and I've had parents send it back with a comment. I want them to. Um, and then Sarah had a question and was asking, sent out a book electronically. It doesn't have a name, sorry. It just says iPhone, but I'd wondered if you would be willing to speak to that. Hi, sorry. Sorry, I, sent, I, I pressed the send button quickly. No problem. Um, no problem. So I, what I meant is like I wanted them to, they read the book every night and they send it back. Um, they record themselves at the end of the week. So if I approved their post, uh, would, because some of them maybe wrote a comment or the child wrote something. Like, so if I approve their post, do they lose that activity? Like, is it gone? Can they still access it? Hmm. I so it's, I think that's kind of like the draft version and I think you can always go back and add to it. Okay, so they, if I approve their post, there's yeah. quite a few activities where I have them, where I have a template plus I have like 
ex ex my example. So, okay, yeah. good to know, thank you. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for content to share with students, PebbleGo is open up as well. And now I'm saying it, I'm like, I feel like I don't know what the password is, but that was one that is, um, if people are connected online that they can read like animal books and place books, that sort of thing. Um, and PebbleGo has been a favorite, I believe, of early primary classrooms for a while. So if you're looking for books, that might be a place to go. If you, Pam, if you go through the uh, Chatham-Kent Public Library, they've got the link to PebbleGo. I don't, do we have, I don't know if we have a link as a board, but. Um, PebbleGo opened it up again for us. So okay. yeah, um, I'm just trying to think where I, I know that. <laughs> Leanne is saying that the password is learning. I don't, I don't know if anyone else has. Oh, I'm just trying, I'm going through my chat messages. Who did I tell about that? <laughs> Now, so will it be the children can access it from their homes? Yes, so yeah. it's a website. I think I found it. So it's a website, so they just go into PebbleGo or Capstone, whatever it's called, and um, then they can use the, the code that the company has released. Oh, it's not through our board, it's through the no. actual yeah. company? Yeah, okay. Actually, PebbleGo, yeah. Okay. Uh, I missed that app. I loved it. <laughs> I agree. It was a great one. It was um, a good one, but I, you know, it's we eb we ebb and flow through things. So for sure. Pam, can I share the password with you? Yes, go ahead. I'm looking through my text, and you're better than my text. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> well, it was your text to me, so oh, it was <laughs> uh, username you sent me was engaged, and password was learning is what you had sent me. And it works? I haven't tried it. I've sent it along and I haven't heard back otherwise. I think I, I think it does work. So maybe we can put that in the chat so people can find that. Yeah, I, and I Leanne actually, sorry, Sam, Leanne actually put that up in there too. So thank you guys for right. putting that out there. Double confirmation, always good. <laughs> and Michelle, and oh, we've got people saying it works. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Small clap. Yeah. So we got about 10 minutes left of our office hour. And we were worried that, you know, there would be times of quiet. So yay, kindergarten teachers and EC partners. <laughs> um, just one more thing to share. Uh, Margie is saying that she said she is late coming on, but does everyone know about the new book called The Big Alone? Um, and it's about the pandemic. It's free to download. And by the sounds of it, it's a book to comfort kids about being alone, but we're all in this together. So that might be something to look into. I don't know. Can you uh, download it online? Or is it through somewhere? Well, let's go Google it. The Big Alone? <laughs> What's it called? It is called, yes, The Big Alone by Alex Evandano. Oh, bigalone.com. Thanks, Lockhart. Free book aims to help children. Oh, there it is. Aww. Oh, it was featured on CTV yesterday. There we go, free download. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. Awesome. I get distracted in picture books for a long time. So keep me on track, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> so Jen, you got some things growing in your back, back behind you too. Oh yeah, we're just doing a little yeah. science experiment. <laughs> but isn't that a great way to go back to it's you know, reinforce, I'm sure you had things like that in your classroom, like things growing or changing, uh, our science kits and kinder kits and everything like that. So, but just having that available brightens up the, brings in that new learning, but still familiar. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Sam was wondering if anyone is doing FDK number talks or having any success with how to go about doing that. I know some of us have been racking our brain trying to figure that out. Does anyone 
have anything on number talks? I haven't done one next or yet, but I was thinking about doing one and I was trying to wrap my head around how that was going to look. And I thought about maybe using some of the math before bed resources um, mm. and posting and just having some open conversations with like, let them comment and whatnot um, and see what they notice or whatnot, just kind of open-ended math. Yeah, that's, that's a great one. Those prompts are, are fantastic. Is that online too? Yeah. Um, so Brandy saying hasn't, she hasn't started yet, but she's been compiling pictures on walks and putting, she's thinking of putting them together using clips. Um, and then I'm assuming probably Brandy just getting kids to respond to it on Seesaw or yes. And Kelly's saying she did a math talk video then posted it on Seesaw. Makes yeah. me think of Sesame Street, the number of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lots of great resources there. Wow. And to think about like just sending one of those pictures home may not mean much to a family, but like if you present it and do the model and talk about it, um, we'll give parents a way to enter into that conversation and I'm sure they will blossom with their little little person just giving them all kinds of things to think about and wonder about. Sure. Anyone else have any questions or anything that they think would be helpful kind of to share as we're getting close to our time here and don't want to keep you for too long? Thank you so much for sharing. I'm getting a lot of great ideas from this too. <laughs> yeah, you guys are amazing. You have so many great ideas and it's so nice to have a platform to just kind of share. It just gives everyone, I think, that that space to breathe and just to kind of understand that, you know, we're all navigating through this together and, and having some ideas to share is so helpful. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy we focused on the learning today too, but just we will always have that technical platform support there for you. Um, so we can get that great learning out to our students um, back. So I think that's something we'll continue on next week when we have another office hour. Um, yeah. We'll focus on the learning, but also Seesaw will be the platform that we can talk about. Um, so the, there is a question there. Um, are they still sending out work packages for students who do not have devices or is the intent now just to get everyone a device? I believe the intent is to continue sending out those packages. Um, I don't know, Mr. Hazard, if you are still out there, but that's kind of my understanding um, that we will continue with those mm -hmm. as the need presents itself. Yeah, package two was just completed. Mm -hmm. I think they're going off to the printers today. Um, so that will be another two weeks of learning available to students. And even though if we do get devices in students' hands, not all students have access to Wi-Fi too. So we have, like, there's two issues there, Wi-Fi and devices. And so. Um, mm -hmm. Catherine is asking, does anyone have a good idea of how to document responses for possible future comments on reports? That's a big one. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Jen, can I go into your, C like my Seesaw account? Um, yeah. I don't have access to the skills. Um, I'm going to click quickly here because I want to protect student privacy. But I'll show you on mine and then I'll go to it in yours. But in this thinking about assessment, um, using the folders is one way of helping us divide along the, the four frames. And you can make your, if I'm in my journal comments, even though this isn't a kindergarten class, if you add something, you can add your comment um, there. But you can also use the T in Seesaw for Schools. The T version is like a private teacher comment so it's only visible to teachers 
So if you are receiving something from students, you can comment on it like to help that home and school communication back and forth. That's one comment you can make, but you can also make this private T comment. So that may be one spot where you want to think about assessment lens. Uh, notice the red microphone so you can talk in your comment as well, I believe, record it. Um, so that's one way. And I was going to flip here, but if you go to your skills button, this is something that's been added for the kindergarten curriculum only at this point. So the skills um, are, we've put in the kindergarten overall expectations are in there for you. And so if you go back to an activity and I think this is just you. Um, so you can, when you click on this icon here, we see we have it in a folder demonstrating literacy and numeracy behavior, but when you click on that icon, you can see all the expectations are in there. So you can now go back and tag things based on an expectation. So I'll just leave that as a little snippet of information. So if you have an activity in there, it's in a, you may have put it in a folder, may not have. As far as assessment or documentation, you can make a T comment, which is only for teacher's eyes, or and you could also put a skill on it, tag it there. So Pam, um, just one more quick question to go along with that. Uh, Cheryl is asking, when you're inputting those teacher-only comments, is there a way to see all of the comments, or do you have to go back through all the pictures to see those so, comments? Um, I struggle with, with showing that right now because I want to protect student privacy, but so I'm going to go back to my made up class that I have here. Um, if you go, when you go in, Clem is my dad's name, so that's why I use that. If I don't, I don't have skills tagged on his, but you all know that when you click on there, you see their portfolio, right? So that's just all of Clem's things. You can click on the folder and see Oh, what if I only want to see his science items? You can filter that way too. So yes, you can keep filtering based on the skill level, right? And so that, and that has to do with um, this page. What happens is as you tag more skills for your students, your students' names will are here. The skills that you use develop here, they will add on every time you put an artifact in so on the sample student there is an artifact there that one means there's one artifact to connect it with that if you click on it you will see the overall expectation and the activity and the student so if that number was four there would be four artifacts there for that so yes if you use the tagging of skills you will be able to sort it down by student and by expectation I believe too that you can also sort it by the calendar, the little calendar icon you have up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I and then also, yeah. So if I and also, there is a, a Zoom session that Ben and Mary Lou and a few of us had done, and it focuses a lot on these activities and marking and skills and whatnot that was put out um, while the rotating strikes were going on. Absolutely, so do you know where we can find those? We go back to our LKDSB uh, website, I'm backing out here. And so if we use our little search button, Kindergarten partnerships, seesaw in early years. There you go. So if you watch that one, it goes into that a lot. Oh, I was trying to see who presented. I think that might be the one. Yeah, that's it. Says ECEs, early years educators, and kindergarten teachers. Yeah. Pedagogical documentation and skills presented. Yeah, and student engagement with activities. Yep, that's yeah. perfect. That's it. 
There you go. So a little bit of learning when, when you're ready for it. <laughs> we might be full right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be full. Okay, so just a reminder that we will be doing these kind of office hour check-ins uh, weekly and there, um, the link is on Memo 23, which can be found on the portal. And again, it's just an open forum. We're not going to be necessarily presenting a whole lot of new stuff, but again, just connecting, sharing ideas. You guys are all amazing. We thank you so much for being here and look forward to the upcoming weeks. Of this. I love chatty and chatty uh, kindergarten <laughs> teachers. <laughs> Makes our job easy. <laughs> so we're back next Wednesday. Along with that. Yes, and there are also lots of other sessions if you have any um, colleagues who are asking um, that's kind of touching on everything. Mm -hmm. okay, there we go. But yeah, I think we're done. Yes, and thank you so much. Uh, if there's anything, please do not hesitate to reach out, email us, whatever. We are here to help you. Enjoy your day and the snow-ish. And we will see you soon. The season of change. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.